Hello, everybody. My name is Dawn Andrada. I'm an administrative support person who works for DEED in the commissioner's office, um, helping support a variety of people and projects. I'm happy to be here today and uh, happy to welcome you. We're glad you could take the time to join the forum today. Um, I think we will kick things off. Uh, the first uh, item on our agenda is uh, the director of our uh, Office of Public Engagement is uh, Ekta Prakash, and she's here to um, give you an update. So thanks so much. Thank you, John. And uh, I just want to say hello to everyone. Um, I know everyone's camera is off, so I cannot see people's faces, but um, just a warm, uh, thank you for the warm welcome. I'm here at DEED, uh, it's been three months and uh, my first name Ekta Prakash. And before joining DEED, I was working in a nonprofit in Twin Cities. And so come from a 16 years of nonprofit background, uh, community engagement work. And my new role at DEED as the Office of Public Engagement is kind of organizing, engaging communities, um, both external, internal to DEED. And so I'm really excited um, to be here um, and to kick off um, and looking forward to work with many stakeholders. So my role as a community engagement is making sure I'm like a liaison between the community stakeholder and the state at DEED. And so I'm excited um, to meet with each of you individually in group and uh, take it from there um, and looking for meaningful conversations um, and things that, you know, must happen and listen to all the voices and be inclusive. So I'm here looking for opportunities um, to have those meaningful conversations with each of you at um, you know, meetings and events and looking forward to collaborate uh, and how we can work together and bring some voices. Um, also throughout the year, we do a lot of celebration and uh, attend a lot of summer events. So anytime you're having an opportunity event invite deed, um, do reach out to me. Um, happy to be there and uh, definitely looking for some meaningful conversation and collaboration. So making sure our voices are included um, when uh, we have new opportunities coming up and if there are gaps, how can we overcome those barriers? So again, uh, Ekta Prakash and Director of Public Engagement and uh, definitely looking for many more opportunities working at DEET. Recently, uh, we launched uh, the community reviewer process uh, we were able to secure 255 reviewers. So anytime there is opportunities to engage community members and stakeholders, um, I'm looking for those opportunities. So again, um, definitely uh, looking forward and looking to meet everyone in person. Um, and I'm gonna hand it over. I don't know if anyone has a question, but Don, I'm gonna hand it over to the next speaker. Um, if folks have questions or introduction, I don't know, the next step. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Tony Anderson with uh, Driver and Vehicle Services. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to uh, join the call here today to talk about uh, driver's license for all. So DL for all was legislation that was signed here this past April, and we are actively getting ready for October 1st. October 1st is the effective date. So we've been working closely with community partners, uh, as well as uh, our industry partners to get us into a position for a A successful release coming up here on October. So far, we've held a for all and even just stepping back. What is driver's license for all? It's the it's the ability for individuals that are unable to provide lawful presence to uh, apply for um, a standard driver's license here in Minnesota or an identification credential. Uh, so, like I mentioned, we're going to be going live here October first with uh, with a solution, and uh, have worked with uh, Twin Cities Public Television. Uh, Jody Kay, who will become, who's uh, just shared her camera here as well as the driver services program director. Her team's been on uh, a number of different radio interviews. We've done press releases and kind of getting, you know, getting the project out there. It's been more of a community engagement project for us than a technology solution. 
we're fortunate where we have a vendor here at uh, uh, DVS called Fast Enterprise. Fast has the uh, op DMV operating systems in uh, 18 other states. And of those states, um, a good majority of those have a driver's license for all program. So we know it'll work. So they have Colorado as a solution, Washington, Maryland, Massachusetts. So we're able to kind of really piggyback. So we know the technology is, um, is uh, in a uh, good spot. And it's like I said, really kind of educating the you know educating the community on you know what is the what what is the process. You know, it's not like you can come in and just get your driver's license. You have to come, you have to do your knowledge test. Then there's specific time periods for individuals you have to wait. So if you're over you know over nineteen, it's three months. If you're under you know under eighteen, there's specific hours for uh, individuals that have to you know complete you know behind the road uh, uh, behind the wheel those types of things. So. Uh, with that, uh, Jody Kay and her team have developed a fantastic presentation that uh, she'll go over, uh, kind of outlining the driver's license for all project, the work that's kind of gone into it, what does it mean, and uh, how we can how we can partner together. So, uh, Jody Kay, with that, I'll turn it over to you. Thanks, Tony, and thanks everyone for the invite and having us here. Uh, we do have a presentation here to go over. Yeah, my team and the. Uh, those here at DVS, we've been working tirelessly just to uh, get driver's license for all up and going. And um, it's been never ending ever since the law signing. So I'll go ahead and get my presentation here for you. Um, and I'll just turn off my camera because sometimes too in a group as big, it sometimes get a little wonky, but you'll, you'll hear my voice. I just wanna make sure folks are able to see the presentation. Okay, and so we have um, presentation is going here. Um, for our next slide, we do have, let's see. Oh, for some reason, I'm not, okay, there we go. Uh, like Tony mentioned that uh, driver's license for all was signed into law on March 7th by Governor Walz. And what it did, it Remove the requirement for individuals to prove legal presence to obtain either a standard identification card or driver's license here in Minnesota. It gives the law gives us the ability to update our primary and secondary documents, and then we'll go over what those are. And DVS will be able to implement uh, driver's license for all come October first. Now, uh, with Driver's License for All, we've launched a dedicated web page that you are able to find at drive.mn.gov. And to the top left-hand side, it will say DL for All, where we have every information that someone would be looking for relating to Driver's License for All. We've updated this uh, website pretty frequently. And so uh, we have, I, I do I, uh, say, check it out if you have a chance to do so, because we have some resources there that's very helpful that you can share with others and those in your agency. With driver's license for all, we were given 16 new positions at DVS, 12 new examiners throughout the state, and a four position in our issuing and driver service coordinating office. With the four positions, two out of those would be issuers. So those would be employees that will look at the documents that are provided and be able to issue either an ID or driver's license. And the other two in the DISCO uh, services coordinating office will be able to continue our community outreach, be able to train our community partners and go outside, outside of the agency to spread more information and training as well. We've updated our system in drive with changes so that come 10-1, uh, those new primary and secondary documents are in the system that those will be able to provide for us to be able to apply for an ID or driver's license. We've also worked with the Twin City Public Television, that's TPT, and we've worked with them to create some videos and graphics for us. The videos have been circulated since the beginning of this month, September, and will continue 
through uh, December 15th here with those videos. Those are on public television and also on YouTube uh, out so that education um, can continue. And also we are working to put those, actually they're there already now on our driver's license for all webpage, those videos where individuals can go ahead and uh, see those uh, videos and graphics as well. We are looking at improving our process for all customers involved here. That's updating our forms. We've updated quite a few of our forms, our application form, translation uh, form, and what you'll need to provide to us. And then language accessibility. That's one thing we are really uh, growing here at DVS is looking at expanding outside of the current languages that we have for our driver's license manual. Currently, the manual is in three uh, languages. That's uh, Spanish, Hmong, and Somali, in addition to English. And our knowledge test is in eight different languages. We'll go over a little bit further here. To date, we've done uh, 30 community events and engagement uh, activities in not only in the metro area, but also in greater Minnesota as well. And we are looking to expand um, to continue more of those events. The images that you see here to the right, these are images that uh, TPT has actually worked with us to create. And the TPT videos and graphics are done in Hmong, Somali, Spanish, and English as well. And the rest of the remaining screens here that I'll show will just give an example of some of the information here that's of the graphics presented in different languages. And we try to make those fun and uh, colorful too so that uh, folks are able to uh, be able to gravitate towards those. And you could see from this one, we have what you need to do um, to take the road test in different languages. And what is needed to get a Minnesota identification card. Now, I talked earlier about our resource uh, page or driver's license for all page. And some of the items that we have, the resources that we're able to provide is identity requirements. To the right of this uh, screen, you're able to see the primary document. So it lists out what are some of those documents that we consider to be primary documents. And under those, uh, you can see them a little bit better too on our website, but some of those primary documents would be like a birth certificate, um, a consular report birth card, um, so adoption paperwork. Then we also have a one pager uh, on what is it all about driver's license for all? Frequently asked questions. You can also find that resource on the website. We also, this, uh, July 1, uh, put up on our website a study guide, not only for the written exam, but also for the road uh, exam as well. There's also information handout for DL for All. We have long version, short version. Those documents, we are in the process of getting those translated into uh, nine different languages, including English, um, on our website so that folks can be able to read these documents, not only in English, but in a language that would be their first language. For um, translation form, we've updated that in who are the individuals that can uh, translate a document. We do ask that any document that's not in English, that those documents must be translated in English and then provided with a translation document attached to that. We also have our virtual assist chatbot program that's able to feel and answer questions like people come to the website and the chatbot can be translated into Hmong, Somali and Spanish as well if someone prefers to um, interact with the chatbot that way as, as well. And I mentioned earlier that our implementation date for driver's license is October 1. We cannot do it any sooner. Um, and our appointments uh, for road tests and uh, written tests can only be made 30 days in advance. Uh, this we've shown to really worked out well for us in the past. We've done uh, 60 days or even six months, but the 30 days is a good one where we're seeing just a little better response in people being able to meet those appointments and not being able to cancel at the last minute or be no show. 
We are taking appointments now for driver's license for all that starting on September 2nd, where folks are able to make those appointments. They're not able to pre-apply right now, but pre-application can be done on October 1st, anytime after that time. And what pre-application is, it's simple. Well, a feature that DVS has where someone can fill out the form in advance, uh, be able to submit documents for us to verify those so that when they get into an actual office, whether that's a DVS location, or um, that they're able to uh, just review the information on the form and be able to sign it. Or if there needs to be any edits, they can make that edit. But it definitely proved to have that person in the office a little uh, less time. Now, our written test is um, in eight different languages. And those eight different languages that we have, we have uh, that specifically in um, English, well, English included Spanish, Hmong, Somali, Vietnamese, Karen, Russian, and ASL. We are also, uh, for our knowledge tests, we have third parties uh, that are able to proctor the knowledge test for us. And a third party person would be someone outside of the DVS office that DVS has approved to administer the class D knowledge test. Currently, they're only able to test in English and Spanish. But come September 25th, they'll be able to offer all those additional languages. So eight total that I just um, read off. We do see that fraud is happening now. And we want to say that spread the word. Let the uh, let individuals know that don't get scammed. Use reputable sources. So that's DVS location. Uh, we've partnered with Unidos of Minnesota, COPAL, the Immigration Law Center of Minnesota. So those are good resources or sources that folks are able to go and get good information and don't have to pay um, a high price or something that's outside of what we have for fees. We do have our fee information too on our website where individuals can be able to see what it actually charge, what we charge by statute for an identification card or driver's license. Now, what we do ask uh, for individuals here is before October 1, um, we will we ask, hey, gather your documents, get those ready. Uh, you need to have a primary and secondary document. And from the list that I showed earlier, that's on our website too, you can pick one primary or one secondary or two primary documents uh, can be submitted to us. And then any documents that's not in English, those will need to get translated. We do say in to prepare that to practice, practice for folks to practice for the exam. Uh, we request in you know, a record request can be made too from DVS if there's any uh, traffic violation, and also too on our website, they can pay for those fines that are needed by going to our e-services. Also um, uh, use the Minnesota court records online to search for names that have been used in the past because we want individuals to let us know too if they've used any names outside of what uh, they're coming forward to uh, apply with COM 10 one or even later to let us know because we would have to merge those records to get every uh, all of those documents in one accord. Um, if fines can be paid online through also through the court website, so not only the courts are able to do that, but you can pay also any DVS fees at our DVS website too as well. Um, inform uh, DVS of any fraudulent scheme that you've noticed. We've uh, we are working at um, coming up with a. A, uh, um, an inbox where uh, individuals can notify us of fraudulent activities that's happening in our community. I do want to go over that. We know that there are going to be some folks who are out there in the community that will have their, li their license expired. If the license expired for less than a year, we will need new documents. I would have to provide a secondary and primary document. And then um, any name change documents, those are necessary. Um, if, if somebody's gone through a name change, we'd want to see those new primary and secondary documents in their current legal name. 
They will not have to take a written exam if less um, expired in less than a year. Um, also, if uh, um, you have an out-of-state driver's license, even if it's expired for one day, they would not need that written exam. Uh, however, for foreign driver's license, because we do see from time to time people come up uh, to apply with foreign driver's license, they will need to take both the written and the road test as well uh, for that piece. But however, if just a regular uh, Minnesotan has an, a license that's expired for less than one year, then they will not need to do the road test. If the license is expired for greater than uh, one year, uh, so between one to five years, they will have to provide new primary and secondary documents. Any name change documents, we will need those as well. They will have to take the written exam um, and uh, no uh, road tests needed. Now, if we have someone who's expired longer than five years, new primary secondary document, if you've had a name change within that time frame, we would need new primary documents to show. The person will have to take a written exam in addition to taking a road exam as well. Um, and the road with the road exam uh, can be done without getting a permit. Uh, so passing the road exam means you don't have to wait for the permit time. Failing the road exam means that someone will have to obtain a permit and continue with the practice time. As Tony mentioned, if someone's over the age of 19, then they'll have a three months practice time. Um, if it's, uh, sorry, uh, over 19 and it's um, three months of practice time, under 18 and they'll have some more requirements that they'll have to go through. Uh, it is important to note that all of the slides I just changed here with license to legal name, that uh, we wanna know any previous alias or even name that someone's used uh, because we need to, to be able to, uh, like I mentioned, merge those documents up and this way we could be able to get all the information we are, to prove that the one person is the true person that's getting the identification card or driver's license. Um, if someone has had a driving uh, license, a driver's license in a different name, they would have to start the entire process over by using their correct legal name for us to be able to get all of that merged and transferred. With that, uh, that ends uh, the presentation here that I have. So I will go ahead and just look for any questions here in the chat. I don't see any. So at this point, I'll just turn it over to, it looks like to the next uh, presenter. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Um, my name is Neela Mulgard. I am leading the, the new Office of Small Business and Innovation. And I have the pleasure today to share a little bit about the new office, the purpose, the scope, and then take any questions that you might have. Um, one topic that we thought we would share today is just some of the, the new funding that is available. Um, you know, if you write in the chat what type of business you are or what type of funding you're seeking, I could better tailor the information to you. But let me just get to share my screen here and get started with just a, a brief update about um, our new office. Okay. So I have the great pleasure of working with an incredible team. And um, as you can see, we, we recently brought four different areas together under one office to better leverage the great work being done internally and to better focus attention uh, to our entrepreneurs, our small businesses, and our tech startups uh, throughout the state. So we have now brought together our small business development centers. This uh, SBDC offices provide no cost um, free consulting 
and training and technical assistance uh, to businesses all across the state. We have nine regional offices, about 30 you know, total off, uh, satellite offices and well over a hundred consultants. So if you have not tapped into the wealth of their knowledge, I would strongly engage you to do that or share the businesses that you support uh, with that resource. We also have the Launch Minnesota program, which I was originally hired at D to create and deploy. This effort is trying to build our, our state's innovative ecosystem. And so we are working to better accelerate our tech, um, tech, new technologies, new emerging technologies, innovative businesses by working to connect and convene and catalyze the work across the state. We also have the Community Partnerships Department or area or office, uh, which is led by Brandon Toner. We, this is the arm that provides millions and millions of dollars to our nonprofits, organizations, and other entities to help our businesses be successful through technical assistance, consulting, and other services. And then we have the Small Business Assistance Office. This is a team that's really now, since this new office uh, shift, is the first point of contact for individuals and companies that are curious about questions about their small business or where to go or who they should call or what kind of financing uh, best fits their type of business or what would be the links for some consulting or technical assistance. They're a really uh, smart team with years of expertise that can better direct individuals and businesses to find the right resources at the right time. When we, when we merged our efforts, there was really three key areas that we focus on um, that was consistent throughout those um, areas of focus. And that is connectivity, capacity, and capital. And so as you see here, connectivity, we know a more connected and coordinated ecosystem increases the rate and the success of new business formation. So we work in multiple ways to better connect our small business community. We have uh, now a monthly call on the second Tuesday of every month at two o'clock, where we welcome businesses to join us and ask questions to us and our other statewide partners and their peers. We have newsletters. We have uh, uh, welcoming Wednesdays where we have facilities all across the state that are opening their doors for businesses and entrepreneurs to come in and ask questions and seek resources. Uh, we have a, a statewide calendar for startups and small businesses. So you don't have to go to every organization's individual calendar, but you can go to one place and see where there's training opportunities or networking opportunities, pitch events, um, a whole host of uh, um resources that you as a business owner might find helpful. We also are trying to increase the capacity and the know-how to be a successful business. At every stage of business, there's new concerns, there's new needs, there's new learning. And so working with our SBDC offices, working with our grantee partners across the state, um, we work with others to help provide that technical assistance. And then access to capital, we know that is at the core of every business and a, a, a need that is felt by all. And so not only would it be some of the financing that we have here with my colleagues in the business finance team, uh, but we also work um, to um, level the playing field for entrepreneurs with some statewide pitch events and publications, training and a whole host of ways <clears throat> to better create access to some of that capital. Now, is there any questions now in the chat about the area or what we do? I'm just gonna check the chat here. Can't see the chat right now. Hmm. Okay. Then I will just um, show you this QR code uh, for right now and see if, um, Let's see if there's anything in the chat. I did, nope, there's nothing in the chat. Okay, so if you wanna scan this with your phone, I will be going through this. Um, I'll just do a very highlight, uh, high level introduction on some of the funding we have available right now through Deed and through our partners. So let me shift my screen here. 
So there's three different, I kind of broke up some of our funding into three different areas. One is grants and direct investment from, from Deed and some of our partners, loans within Deed, and then loans through our partners. So for high tech, high growth startups, we have the innovation grants. So these grants are available to businesses with innovative technology or an innovative business model. We have the angel tax credit, and uh, I will share links to, to this, uh, these programs after. So you can hit the, the hyperlinks and get all the details that you need, or I'm, I'm also happy to answer any questions. Um, this legislative session, we also had the Promise Act pass. Uh, which will be providing $94 million in promise grants to certain areas of the Twin Cities and to certain areas of greater Minnesota. More details of this program will come out in January. It's still being developed, but this will be deployed by the Neighborhood Development Center and by the Initiative Foundations in greater Minnesota, but the NDC will be managing this in the Twin Cities. We also are working with the University of Minnesota as our state sponsored entity, and they are providing um, on our behalf, a direct investment fund, which is help, helping some of the high growth tech startups um, increase their access to capital. And then we also have a step grant that if your business is looking to go abroad and increase your market reach, there is some grant dollars available. Now the next um, slide is just about some loans with Indeed. We have the, oops, apologize about that. We have the Native American Business Loan. We have the Growth Loan Fund, which is managed by our business finance team. Uh, and so that is once again, um, an ability to leverage some private dollars that you might be fundraising on to be able to leverage a, a, a loan and um, that has been um, showing many benefits to some companies. And then we also have an automation loan for small manufacturing sites. And then one thing that's really important uh, to, to share with this audience, and, and we bring up a lot, is a lot of times the um, individuals in our community are curious where Deed shows up. How do they help our business, our entrepreneurs? And it's really done a lot through our partners. And it's us providing dollars to others to help uh, businesses directly. So we were excited that the legislators passed more money for the Emerging Entrepreneur Loan Program. Once again, there's a promise grant and a promise loan. We were also um, new legislation for the Expanding Opportunity Fund the loan participation and guarantee program that is run by our partners. And in down the road, um, when, when the cannabis office is fully um, stood up, there will be a can startup loan program for 6 million. But once again, I work with our, our partners in business finance to make sure that all these programs are successful and we work with our partners in our community. So, that was just a high level of our new office and the tremendous amount of work that is done in that office, the scope of it, and then just some of the financing that's available to some of our small businesses, entrepreneurs, and startups across the state. Is there any questions that you have or comments that you'd like me to know about as we continue to, to serve our small businesses? All right. Well, that is great. I must have answered all your questions. <laughs> anyway, thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Appreciate it. And please feel free to reach out at any time. Thank you. Thank you, Nina. Uh, over to you, Sadia. Hello, everyone. I'm going to go ahead and turn on my camera so I can see, or you can see me. Hi everyone, my name is Sadia Mohammed, and I am here representing Minnesota Department of Education. I wanted to just do a quick introduction. I am the multilingual support and outreach specialist at the Public Engagement Division. And um, one of the main things that I'm really focusing on right now is language access, which is really focusing on ensuring that families who speak languages other than English have access to information and services from public in, public schools, especially K to 12 schools. As we all know, 
uh, language access really um, encompasses policies, procedures for district communication with all members of the public, uh, making sure that we have oral interpreting and written translation, professional development advocacy, providing that voice for all students and families. And so with that, I wanted to um, introduce you all to our parent and guardian guide to school. And I don't know if I'm able to, put, I'll maybe put it in the chat in a little bit. I don't know if I'm able to maybe share my screen. Let me see if I'm able to do that. Just so that you all can see what that looks like. Okay. All right. So this is what it looks like. It is our parent guide to school and it is translated in all different languages. We have Somali, Karen, Oromo, Amharic, Ukrainian, um, and Karen. And we are hoping to also translate in, in Pashto and Dari pretty soon here. And this parent guide really, uh, the reason why I'm sharing this with you all is to just make sure, um, especially if we're really focusing on our refugee, new to country um, families, and uh, students, I wanted to share this uh, guide with you all so that you are able to share it with families that you might encounter in your respected positions. And so really in this guide, it really will go over um, how to enroll children in schools, what that enrollment process looks like, anything about school policies and practices that they might need to know. It is very short in some of those, um, I would say, yeah, three paragraphs um, or not even more than that, just so that it's very limited and, um, but very specific to a new to country family um, in understanding what those policies might look like. Um, talks about free reduced price meal forms. Um, it A lot of the times, a lot of those forms will also be highlighted. And so families are able to um, go ahead and click on the website if it is a PDF form. If not, they can just go ahead and type it in. Um, and so I just wanted to take time to just highlight that this document is live. It is on, the, on our website. I will put the website in the link, uh, the link to the chat. And um, I do also have all the PDF forms for those languages that I've just mentioned. Um, they are not live on the website just yet as they are just, um, again, going through our communications and making sure that it is all accessible. Um, but I do have the PDF forms. I did send it over to your, um, to some of the other agencies as well. And uh, some people might already have it. And I will see if I can also link it in the chat to see if you're able to see the PDF forms. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to just highlight is, let me get back to my screen here. Um, so our secretary, uh, U.S. Secretary, Mr. Cordona, visited Minnesota on September, I believe it was September 6th, um, and he was able to uh, form a letter, and this letter was sent out to superintendents, principals, the governor's office, uh, the Education Commissioner, Mr. Jilly Willie uh, Jett, and he really reiterates the state's responsibility to supporting education access for our refugee immigrant families. This letter really reminds anyone, people who are in our K-12 education, what our responsibility is, and it emphasized all of our shared responsibilities to uphold the rights for our refugee immigrant communities. Um, I will also see if I'm able to put that letter in the chat for you all to read. It might be, again, like I said, public information. Um, but again, he really just emphasizes everything uh, the federal uh, law has talked about in regards to um, language access, in regards to um, 
public school districts and what that looks like when they are enrolling families and how they may not deny access to an education to any child based on immigration status. Um, and just really highlighting all those different violations of the federal law for districts to know. Um, and so I wanted to share that with you all so you also can see and read that letter um, and be those advocates that we all are for our families and children. Um, yeah, and so those are the quick two updates that I had for you all. Uh, thank you, any questions? Hey, can you send us maybe the Somali uh, translation if you have them? I work at the Minneapolis Public Schools District. So Absolutely. just send me, just send me to so I will share it with the community. Absolutely. I'm gonna see if I can put it in the chat. Um and I'll share that with you all as well. Yeah, so that's about it for me. If anyone doesn't have uh, any other questions, I'm gonna go ahead and refer it back to RAC. Thank you. Thank you, Sania. Um, I think we've gone through the agenda so fast so quick, so that's great. Uh, if there are any questions or uh, comments, I will open up. I'll probably share a few updates um, if I uh, miss on anything, you guys can uh, open up the um, session afterwards. So I had a tooth pull out today. So if I'm not um, if I'm not clear, I'll make sure I pull up with a um, a chat or uh, connect with you separately. Uh, but I'm just going to go ahead and share my screen on some of the updates I wanted to um, give as far as Ona is concerned. Um, if you can see on my screen there, um, it's been a, the Latin Heritage Month, this month, uh, great celebrations, upcoming Cambodian Heritage Celebration. Um, we have joined the uh, couple of the community organizations that are hosting events around the, uh, the, the state. Uh, and I am happy to um, um, come to or, or join you on your events, so please feel free to reach out. <clears throat> We're also hosting Deeds Workforce Summit, uh, that is on Wednesday. Uh, this is the first ever workforce summit that we're hosting at our new offices. And um, even though the registration is, is closed, we'll be uh, um, sharing more updates from Indeed. Um, looking ahead, we're hoping to hire the program manager. This position will be posted in early October. Uh, so specifics will be coming out later, but this is the other person that will be in the um, the Office of New Americans and um, someone whom we will all be working closely with. Um, we will also host our St. Cloud community event on September 28th. Um, we are scheduled from 1 to 2.30. So if you're in St. Cloud area, please feel free to join us for that event and we'll share the invite today. Some of the grants opportunities were shared by um, Anila. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> and I wanted to just add that we are working to release as late as by latest November. So the targeted population workforce program that you've all asked uh, about that will be coming out uh, towards November or um, even before that, and then right for five percent so one of the grants that everyone is excited about. Uh, and this was uh, a workforce uh, development grants. Uh, with that, I will just uh, stop sharing and I will um, ask you guys any updates, any comments, any questions before we wrap up early today. Great. If we don't have any uh, further questions, I am happy to uh, give back some time. And until we meet again on our next call, uh, the first Tuesday of next month, so it will be the third, but I will be in communication with send the agenda. Uh, thank you all for joining us, and we really hope to see you uh, soon. And have a good rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>